Hello, it's Ben here at Glide, uh, another one of our short uh, introductory videos, uh, this time trying to cover the very basics of how Glide tracks an individual workflow. Um, it's really important to understand the simple yet yeah, kind of secure and controlled way in which we do this. Um, I think if you spend a bit of time coming familiar with this, you'll hopefully see the kind of differences from the traditional systems and see how it tries to deliver peace of mind. Okay, so I'm in a system here, very similar to the uh, templates that will be on your trial system. So what I'm gonna do first is, is literally go through what you'll be doing now. So we create a new client. Okay, we get the option on this screen just to confirm it's corporation tax and put in the first year end. So let's say we've picked up this client today and, and the first year we're going to do was actually the March 15. Uh, we may as well say that it was incorporated about a year previous to that on the 11th of March 14. Okay, that's going to take us to the client card and what it does there because so many of the clients have an accounts workflow we have straight away created the first job there so how do we how do we move this job through and how do we know when the next job will create uh, really important things to understand first thing to explain is that there's there's two parts to the glide database so you have your client database which holds the client name and all of this uh, all of the information in these custom fields to do with your clients so that's permanent information Obviously, it will change over time, but that is on the client record. Now, periodically, Glide will automatically create these workflows. It's one of the key things, really. You don't have to uh, constantly be thinking, do I need to roll forward my workflows? Have I created all of my March year ends? Have I got all this week's payroll in this list? You know, is this widget showing me all of this quarter's VAT returns? The whole idea is that you only have to tell Glide that you provide a service once and tell it the first date and then it's guaranteed to be there and this is a key thing to understand so separate to that to the client information is the workflows so if I click on the March 15 counts workflow here this is in a different area of the database so when you've done March 15 and when March 16 is created it's not going to be typing over this info you know this is stored the jobs data is stored separately. So when you're doing March 16, you better look back at this March 15 job card, see when things were done, see any comments on the discussion forum, uh, see who did the job, etc. Uh, in a similar way, every single VAT return, annual return, management accounts, etc., etc., every single job card will always be there for you to look at. So it's, that's, that's a key thing, really. Okay, so these jobs we've said will pop up automatically. You provide the trigger date, which we did. The trigger date moves on by the frequency of the system. So this is obviously an annual system. So when it created March 15, it's moved it to March 16. Uh, you can set your systems up to have any frequency. So we have uh, tax returns and P11D are based on the tax year. So they're a bit different, but you'll see in VAT returns, we have a quarterly trigger, a monthly trigger. Uh, annual returns is, is an annual trigger. Management accounts, uh, let's see what triggers we've got in here. Okay, a couple again, some monthly and quarterly. And I think payroll's got quite a few options as well. Let's see what's in there. Yeah, so as an example, let's say this client also has a uh, monthly payroll. And the first one we're going to do will be the 31st of May. Okay, so this is um, on these supplementary workflow systems. Once you've created your client, this is where you come in and set the systems to be either active or not active and then create your first workflows. So we've put in the 1st of May and it's gonna be automatic created on the 6th of May. Now on the first one, sometimes there's a bit of backdating, so we'll just be pressing the button there to create that first workflow. Now the auto create date is in the future, so we can sit back and relax knowing that on the 5th of June, the next job will pop up. So that's kind of quick intro into how the jobs come about. Um, now let's take ourselves through a job. So it's been created, it's sat in your first stage, and all of the deadlines exist. Um, we have obviously the first year rules kicking in there for Companies House. Now on a 
lots of systems um, updating workflows in case you're coming in and putting dates in. You know, you'll have a layout similar to this where you'll come in and perhaps say, uh, yeah, we did this on this date. And you might have created a spreadsheet which does something very similar. Glide is different. So when you configure Glide, and, and there's a different video on how to do that, it's all about the process and moving through the process. So currently we're on the stage to request books and records. And I think actually it'd be quite useful if in a separate window we follow this through on the dashboard. So currently, uh, coming back to the stage progress monitor, our new job is in there as the number one. There it is, and we can click back through to get to the next uh, job card. OK, so what you do is for every stage that you set up, you then configure. Obviously, you don't, you don't have to configure anything. The templates come exactly as we're looking on screen now. This is the templates. So you then set up any number of progress buttons. OK. And once you've done something, so that this, this effectively gives you your, your actions that are possible at that moment in time, at that stage. So once we're saying the only thing that can happen on the stage to request books and records is we request the books and records. Hence, we have one button. So we come in and say that's what we've done. You see that, that creates an audit trail showing the date and who did that. Um, now, if you were to cycle through a stage more than once, you would have a full audit trail of every time you've been through it who pushed the button and which button was pressed. OK, now we've come on to stage two now, awaiting books and records. That was because the button we pressed was set up to put us on stage two. Obviously, you could have a button that said, put me on to this stage, put me to the end, so on and so forth. Uh, just coming back and refreshing my dashboard, we will see that we've now, our number one has moved down to here. OK, so on the stage awaiting books and records, we've actually got two options here. So we've got an option to say that we've chased the books and records. So we can push that and it's actually just not changing the stage. It's just creating an audit trail that we've traced the books and records. And here's an example where when you do go through a stage multiple times, you do build up an audit trail. OK, so hopefully it's already becoming apparent that far from a firstly, the workflow is guaranteed to exist and be on stage one in your progress monitor because it creates automatically. And then when yourself or your fellow colleagues come in to record progress, it's very, very controlled. So you record what has actually happened and you've already determined in the configuration exactly what that means to your system. So it's impossible to have these things accidentally disappearing or being in the wrong place. It's much more about process control, a much more secure system. So let's move on. So let's now say books and records received. OK, now there was actually I should have mentioned this before. If you, if you roll the video back, we'll see that we actually had that set up to create a target here. And that's because when you get into the more advanced points of the system, which isn't really what this video is about, but basically with your progress buttons, you can have any number of workflow actions. So the first and most obvious one is whether to move to a new stage. So it doesn't have to move to a new stage, but it can move to any new stage. Uh, it's also going to have a workflow action potentially to change the current holder. So the current holder can be set to a staff position or a particular person or the job pool. Uh, you can have workflow actions set up to set or reset any number of targets relative to any date you see on this screen. Um, so loads of workflow actions you set up on each button. but Hopefully it's now becoming you know, fairly clear and I'll try and draw the video to a conclusion by just moving through. OK, um, now here's you know, actually an example of um, another workflow action. So this workflow action says, don't let anyone click this button until we have filled out the data point that is called preparer. So it wants to insist on me allocating the job to a member of staff. And again, you know, that just means that, say, if your staff have their dashboard set up and they're using the jobs held widget, it means you're not going to have jobs just awaiting preparation, but no one's holding them. So, again, it's all about controlling what data is being put in at what times. OK, I think the template's then just kind of fairly easy to to go through. Approved by client. OK, right. Um, Finalized is my final button. When I'm allowed to click that, this workflow will be classified as completed. 
Uh, that uh, means it goes into the archive, still very easily accessible, but obviously it's less prominently portrayed on the dashboards and critical therefore that these three deadlines must have got their green tick. So once a deadline has its green tick, it will not be featuring in the, uh, in the uh, traffic lights and it will not be featuring in the deadline monitor on the dashboard. Now you can configure uh, how you get your green tick. So it's either linked to a stage. So for example, when we went through the stage, uh, you know, final account sent, that stage could be set to tick off uh, one or more of these deadlines. We tend to find, and, and hence the reason we've configured the demo system, as, uh, sorry, the trial, the templates for the trials in this way, is that sending the accounts to company's house and sending in the tax can happen at a number of different times. And therefore we record that as a, just a custom date point. So account submitted to company's house. When I put a date in there, it gives me the green tick. Okay. And it then saying, look, you're telling me you've got corporation tax here. So can you also confirm the CT payment has been made or at least that you've advised the client that gets me that green tick and finally CT 600 filed gets me that green tick now I'm able to click finalize and that workflow is done and as I say just to kind of confirm on the client card accounts tab it's always going to be there it's just in the completed section so um, come 30th of March 16 your next workflow will automatically create itself I mean obviously configure this date to be whatever you want. Um, often people have it one or two months before the year end. Okay, so, you know, what's the key thing we're trying to convey here? It's the fact that, you know, the requirement placed on yourself or one of your colleagues is just to create the new client to confirm which services are active. That's it if it's a, a tax year system because in the tax year systems, on one day of the year, you know, typically the 6th of April, a new workflow will be created for all clients that are active. Uh, if it's a client trigger date system, such as most of these up here, then the second thing you have to do is you have to, let's find the one that I did. Yeah, you have to provide your first trigger date. Okay, and as we said, if you're backdating, you just have to press create now until you have a auto create date in the future then you relax you know you, you, you're able to then focus on other things in the knowledge that your jobs will be appearing on your dashboard so simply a case of having the progress monitor set up for each each system you have and keeping an eye on this first line which will be getting bigger and bigger as jobs are created and then your job is to come in and, and gradually move these on hopefully that helps with the you know, really basic concept of what's Glide doing, what Glide is doing. We'll obviously have other videos for the more in detailed bits. Hopefully I've kept this video to less than 10 minutes and um, the contact details will be coming up on the screen now. If it doesn't make sense, please do get in touch. Thank you.